Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer Titicom video, we're going to be performing a Tech Tribunal on AMD's Mantle, specifically on mid-range GPUs. We're doing this test on a Radeon R9 280. And in the description of this video, there is actually an article which will give you a lot more information than what we could cram in this video. And inside that article is also links to a full Radeon R9 280 review, which puts it up against one of our... GeForce GTX 760s. Anyway, on with this particular show. There was obviously a lot to do about Mantle API, and so the question remains, is it a consideration? Is it a factor which you should actually bear in mind, especially if your budget is like the 150 slash 250 Great British Pounds mark? Obviously, you can translate into that uh, into your own specific currency. The short answer is yes, Mantle does make a difference even on the mid-range. Um, what we've basically done for our testing, we've used two types of CPU. I'll quickly go into those. One would be the i7, um, that would be the 4770K, not overclocked. And then the 4670K, once again running at stock, 16 gigabytes of RAM. The latest drivers, which would be... The 14.7 betas, which obviously are pretty vital. And we've simply reused our um, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 numbers, which were using also the latest NVIDIA drivers. So anyway, uh, it's important for us to get onto the same page. I'm going to very quickly go over what Mantle is. I'm sure many of you know this anyway. And if you need more information, I've got much more info in the article. But suffice to say, it's a new uh, API, which of course was developed by AMD. It's proprietary. It can only be used currently for their um, AMD GCN architecture. And the idea here is that it's um, low level. In other words, it allows better access to GPU functionality. And it does not have such a high abstraction layer that DirectX 11 has. Now, DX12, of course, is going to be released, but that's not going to be until some point uh, late next year. And that's what the murmuring is. Anywho, so in this respect, this will allow the GPU to have a lot more draw calls. It can also run the rendering thread on more than one CPU. Um, and it just basically offers, theoretically anyway, a much better performance. So what about reality? Because obviously that's a really big thing. Uh, reality is sometimes very different to theory. Well, in this case, the good news, everyone, is that Mantle does uh, definitely offer a significant performance increase in some instances. So, as I mentioned, if we start out with Thief, um, <clears throat> as you probably saw, Thief with DirectX 11 is pretty reasonable. It's 58.9 FPS. Um, on the other hand, if you're dropping it down to the 4 4670, I'm just going to call it 4 cores, it's quicker to say, uh, that means you're getting 53.8 FPS. If you're using Mantle, you get 70.1, which is pretty impressive, to be honest with you. <clears throat> um, meanwhile, if you're using the 4-core CPU, you're going to be getting 66.3, so still an increase. It's also worthy of note that a GTX 760 managed to net as 52.2 FPS, which is still reasonable, as it turns out. It's just not quite as good as AMD's. While we're on the subject of AMD, um, the Radeon R9 280 actually scaled slightly better with Mantle than it did DX11. We're only talking a couple of percent, but Mantle managed to reach 81.1. .1. This, of course, is all 1080p um, highest quality settings, whereas a DirectX 11 was 62.8. Meanwhile, um, Battlefield 4, so yes, Hardline Beta is a thing at the moment, but let's just be honest, it's not really wise, it's not really fair to do testing on a beta, um, because obviously performance can change. I actually bought this game specifically for the purpose of Mantle, and I've got to say that I am absolutely sodding awful at it, so please forgive my suckiness. But there are a number of factors which immediately become abundantly clear as we play um, the game. Firstly, that you're able to play the title at much higher quality settings and frame rate, even with DirectX 11, and this comes to us either with AMD or NVIDIA's mid-range cards than either next-generation console can muster. 
not only do you in some cases have a better resolution you've also got higher graphical settings so there's definitely that to consider moving away from the console side of things we're running everything at ultra with two times msaa if you do overclock the radeon r9 or the gtx 760 you can definitely consider turning on times four but for this i decided to keep it to times two um just for the sake of frame rate so the bottom line is obviously Battlefield 4, stuff can happen, there is some variance here, but you can consistently see times where um, Mantle, specifically on scripted sections, Mantle does perform a little better. In some cases it's 5 frames a second, other times up to about 10, but let's just be honest here, even if it's 2 frames a second it's still a better performance than DirectX 11. Once again, that's not taking anything away from DirectX 11, it's just a point of fact. So the conclusion we have to draw here is, is it better? Is it worthy? Is it is it crucial to get a Mantle card? Is it is it a major um, positive for AMD? The answer is yes, it's a major, but there are a couple of caveats. Firstly, DirectX 11, uh, sorry, 12, we don't know the state of that and how that's going to impact Mantle when it's released. Um, obviously, that's not until late next year, so at the very least, you're going to have 12 to 14 months where you just can't have a low-level API unless you're going with Mantle. The second thing, which, which games are actually available on Mantle that you want to play? Now, there are quite a few uh, which are either in development or currently released. For example, Plants vs. Zombies, Battlefield 4, Battlefield Hardline, the new Mass Effect, Star Citizen, and so on and so forth. But you might just be one of those people who only play Guild Wars 2 or Diablo, in which case this isn't going to impact you. And that's just something you need to take in mind and uh, kind of go from there. But certainly if you are someone who is going to be playing those games, let's say you're looking for a new GPU for Battlefield Hardline, this is certainly something to factor in. Finally, and no, although no one will comment on this, whether it's contacts at Valve or AMD or even people are a little bit scared to speculate, It'll be interesting to see how Valve, with their Steam OS, actually deal with Mantle. Because theoretically, and once again, theory is not reality, it would make porting games from Windows to Linux considerably easier. Unfortunately, right now, AMD aren't supporting Steam OS properly, although they're saying they're working on it, and Valve haven't really commented when it comes to Mantle. So whether this is something that's going to happen, you've got to remember, however, firstly, Mansell is still in kind of a closed area. Right now, it's not um, freely available. It will eventually become kind of open market. So in theory, even NVIDIA could use it, although it's very doubtful. So right now, you could almost consider it to be kind of in testing still, Mantle. And the second thing is Steam OS is once again also in testing. It's not freely available yet. Yes, you can download it. Yes, you can install it. But the caveat, of course, would be it could break your PC or you might not have full stability or you might not have full game support and so on because once again, it's still being tested. But it's just something to think of. Overall, I like Mantle. I do find it offers better performance. Scales well with CPU cores. I've not actually tested this with an AMD CPU core fairly ironically, although I do have the platforms, I just need to kind of piece them all together. So that's definitely something we're going to be testing. And on the same subject of testing, I'm also going to be trying out further the overclocking scenario. There's also other games, for example, Bat uh, Sniper Elite 3. Um, I've been trying to contact Rebellion and AMD and a couple others, and they're not ready to announce when the support for the Mantle or Mantle patch is going to be released for Sniper Elite, which is a little disappointing because I'd really like to try that out um, and see what type of performance you can get with Sniper Elite, especially as it was so... Um, performance hungry, particularly on consoles, I would just like to see just how all of that uh, equals out to, and I'd like to do a lot more overclocking tests as well, but obviously we don't have that right now, so we can only go with what we've got. So my overall thoughts and opinions, I do like Mantle, I think it has a lot of particular potential, but once again, both AMD and NVIDIA do have Pretty nice bonuses and exclusive pieces of technology on both cards. However, as I do really love NVIDIA's physics. 
I actually really like the aesthetic appeal on games which do support it. However, to be a realist, um, Mantle is probably more useful because it offers you more performance. And especially the mid-range, it just, well, extra performance. It's basically all I've got to say. Extra frame rate equals, well, very, very good. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Apologies once again for my absolutely awful Battlefield 4 um, gameplay. I didn't really have time to practice or kind of learn anything, so I was kind of learning on the fly, which is never the way to improve your skills. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.